Xi Jinping takes a step towards becoming Mao as political infighting within the Chinese Communist Party heats up. Welcome back to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. So the Chinese Communist Party is well known for its internal factional power struggles, which could determine the future of China. Now, sure, there are political power struggles in every country, but in China, they don't have democracy. So every Chinese official gets their position through power struggles. I guess you could say power struggles are like the Communist Party's version of elections. And you know what that means. It's time for another episode of our favorite communist soap opera, General Hostility. Previously on General Hostility, a life or death power struggle rages on between current Chinese leader Xi Jinping and a political clique tied to former leader Jiang Zemin. Xi Jinping launches an anti-corruption campaign that purges more than a million officials tied to Jiang. That includes Zhou Yongkang, the former head of China's powerful security apparatus, the PLAC. It controlled China's police, courts, and prisons. But as Xi positions himself to be supreme leader, old allies could become enemies. Is the final battle coming? That show has everything. It's been a while since we've done an update on the factional infighting within the Chinese Communist Party, and there are several major developments. First, big picture, Xi Jinping is in trouble. He was appointed as a compromise candidate without a huge power base, which means that in the power struggle, he's had to amass a tremendous amount of personal power, or he'd get squashed by the faction tied to former leader and toad in the hole, Jiang Zemin. That's what happened to former leader Hu Jintao, which made him sad. How did she avoid Hu's fate? Usually by purging some official tied to Jiang and putting himself in charge of the organization instead. That's why she is now known as the chairman of everything. And let me tell you, he's done some great work as the chairman of the People's Karaoke Club. However, life for Xi isn't all covers of Girls' Generation. As chairman of everything, Xi Jinping also gets the blame for everything. And there's been a lot to be blamed for recently. First, the coronavirus outbreak. Besides just the scary pandemic part, the coronavirus hit the Chinese economy harder than anything since the 1970s. That's back when Mao had the brilliant idea that communist China really shouldn't have an economy. But beyond that, the Chinese Communist Party's cover-up of the coronavirus has turned the Western world against the Chinese regime, which often means against Chinese companies. Yeah, funny that. The UK was going to make a deal with Huawei, but then British Prime Minister Boris Johnson got the coronavirus, and now he's changed his mind about Huawei. Frankly, everything is going wrong for the Communist Party. There's been growing global criticism of their concentration camps in Xinjiang and their oppression in Hong Kong. And to top it all off, there's unprecedented flooding in most of China. So you know the solution to China's problems, right? Open a research center on Xi Jinping thought on diplomacy. If you don't know what Xi Jinping thought is, well, it's not super clear. But you might think of it as his version of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism, plus economic growth with a sprinkle of concentration camps and a community of common destiny with mankind, which means let the Chinese Communist Party take over stuff, but internationally. Xi Jinping thought was added to China's constitution in 2018. That was the same time they removed term limits for Xi Jinping, so he could be Presitator for life. And this is big, because ever since Mao Zedong, the Communist Party was run according to what they called collective leadership. Basically, after all the economic and political disasters Mao personally created, no one wanted a single strongman ruler calling all the shots. But it looks like Xi Jinping is headed into Mao territory fast. 
This is an article by Xi Jinping in the Communist Party's flagship ideological journal, Qiushi. I say article pretty loosely. It's more like 18 quotes from Xi slapped together. Hey, you know, if they got enough quotes together, maybe they could turn it into a book. And then everyone can wave it around to show how they're an expert on Xi Jinping thought. Anyway, the article in Qiushi was the lead story in all the major Chinese state-run media. And the basic idea is that party leadership is absolutely necessary. And the core of the party is Xi Jinping. And that means Xi Jinping is gearing up for a fight. You can get a sense of where things are going by little hints in Chinese state-run media. Take this front page of the People's Daily. Xi Jinping, big front and center, surrounded by business leaders, telling them to be more patriotic. And then way down here with a small picture is State Council Premier Li Keqiang, who is nominally number two in the party. Li Keqiang is not in Jiang Zemin's faction, but it's long been rumored that Xi Jinping and Li Keqiang do not get along, and they're both trying to undermine each other. It's like a mini side power struggle. Like, for example, Xi Jinping having a big meeting with business leaders when Li Keqiang is supposed to be in charge of the economy. And here's a section on the state-run Xinhua website that's just for reports on Xi Jinping. Wow. Look at that. Remind you of anything? Anyway, last month, Xi Jinping did an inspection tour of some villages in rural China. He talked about his goal, to make China a moderately prosperous society. Yes, that's his actual propaganda slogan, a moderately prosperous society. You don't want to be too ambitious. He has the same attitude toward weight loss. And again, in the party's ideological journal, Qiushi, she wrote that China is very close to being moderately prosperous because there are 400 million people in the middle class. This was at the end of May, after China was shut down for the coronavirus. But while Xi Jinping was talking about how great everything is, Premier Li Keqiang was talking about how terrible everything is. He said 600 million Chinese people earn only $140 a month. That's not enough to pay for rent on a one-bedroom apartment in a mid-sized city. So we're getting very different messaging from two top leaders of China. With so many people unemployed, Li Keqiang has been promoting what he calls a street vendor economy. Basically, people can sell stuff on the streets. That's moderately prosperous, right? Well. Here's where state-run media can give you clues to power struggles in the Chinese Communist Party. State-run media first promoted the street vendor economy, but began running articles criticizing the idea on June 5th. Since then, each provincial and city government delivered conflicting information on whether or not street vendors would be allowed to sell their wares. That doesn't sound like the street vendor economy has the approval of the core leader. But on top of that power struggle, there's also the bigger, ongoing power struggle between Xi Jinping and Jiang Zemin. Top officials have announced a purge of the PLAC, the Political and Legal Affairs Commission. That's China's massive security apparatus that was backed by Jiang Zemin's guy, Zhou Yongkang, who is basically a human thwomp. Xi Jinping purged Zhou Yongkang five years ago and then replaced him with his own protege, Chen Yixin. This month, Chen hosted a meeting to describe what he calls the cleansing campaign. The PLAC teams in the whole country are impure, unjust, and lack executive force. Some members even violate law and discipline. They are bad horses, have bad impact, and have done great damage. We have to turn the blade to face ourselves, in order to treat the problem, which I think is very exciting. Xi Jinping had talked about purging tigers and flies from the Communist Party. And now this guy is talking about purging bad horses. It's like the Communist Party is some kind of animal farm. Now, Chen said there were six groups that would be targeted. PLAC officials who interfere in the judicial system, 
who operate companies, who own shares of private companies or lend money with interest, whose spouses or children operate illegal business, who release prisoners early after being bribed, and who control criminal cases. In other words, there's going to be a lot of purges happening in Chinese businesses and the legal system. Already this year, two high-ranking PLAC officials have been ousted. Sun Li Jun was punished for serious violations of discipline and the law. The other was Fu Zhenghua. They were both promoted by a former PLAC chairman, Meng Jianju. Meng himself was a key player in Jiang Zemin's faction. So why is the purge of the PLAC happening now? Well, coming up in August is the party leadership's annual summer meeting at the beach resort of Beidai He. Think of Beidai He as the Chinese Communist Party's executive corporate retreat. You know, lots of relaxing backstabbing. Beidai He is where Xi Jinping still has to answer to other current and former party leaders. And given everything that's happened this year, it probably won't be so pleasant. Which is why Xi Jinping is going on the offensive now, before the meeting. I can't wait for the next episode of General Hostility. Next time on General Hostility, as Communist Party leaders get ready for some fun in the sun, what creature lurks in the waters at Bei Dai He? And now it's the time when I answer questions from you, my loyal 50 Cent Army, fans of the show who support what we do through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Heiss asks, is Jiang still in power behind the scenes? That's an important question, Heiss. So Jiang is like 93 years old, or possibly 903, and he's not in the best of health. He literally has to be carried around. So I don't know if he's still personally calling many of the shots. However, believe it or not, he didn't build his political clique by attracting people with his charming personality. Jiang Zemin was able to seize power by building a massive system outside the law to persecute Falun Gong. That's the meditation practice that used to be very popular in China before Zhang tried to kill them all. If you wanted to be promoted, you had to take part in Jiang's anti-Falun Gong campaign. But that also meant you had blood on your hands. And there was lots of money involved, including massive amounts of corruption. Which means you could lose everything if that all comes out. So you have to remain loyal, because if Jiang Zemin goes down, you go down too. So because all of Jiang's people have this shared crime, they're all fighting against Xi Jinping to save themselves and their money. And that's largely what drives the Jiang faction today. Thanks for your question, Heiss. And for all of you watching, consider joining the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. You'll have a chance to ask me questions on the show, and there are some other cool perks as well. Check out patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn more. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.